Welcome again, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Uh, this video will cover auto-correlation of time-varying channels. Uh, the remaining objectives and learning outcomes so far would like to go over the meaning of autocorrelation and why it's important for time varying channels. We'll share with you the important model for the JX model. And then we'll look at the uh, level crossing rate and average fading duration. Now to understand how to represent a random process, because once we look into time varying channel, we need to describe this channel and, and the PDF is not good enough. Why? Because we need some time relation. To simplify things, maybe you have seen in your statistical courses that, or statistics course, that we can use stationarity. And that there is something called WSS or wide sense stationary. So when, we, when do we call a random process to be wide sense stationary? If the first and second moments are not time varying. So the mean must be constant and the second order moment should not change with time. It should be only function of time difference rather than absolute time. I'll show you some examples to recall your statistics. So here we're having some random processes here. And uh, once we want to introduce the time variation, we go from random variables to random processes. So these are four, sa four samples, blue, uh, red, green, and yellow. And you can see here that this is one process, another process is shown here, a third one is shown there. So which one of these seems to be white sense stationary? This is clearly not white sense stationary because if you look at the mean at different instances instances of time, then you'll get different answer. For example, here there is a certain mean and here the mean of course is much lower in terms of amplitude. So similarly this guy, although the mean is constant, almost here, here, whatever you want to go, but you notice that the second order statistics, which measure how things changing, change uh, with respect to each other, this of course is, is not the same. Here there are lots of variation, here lots of variance, the variance becomes much less here. This third one seems to be a good example. So we can say the first one is not uh, white sense stationary because the mean is not constant. The second one, the second order statistics changes with time, the variations, the variance is we have little variance, here we have higher variance, and the third. So the third one seems to be an example of white sense stationary process. Of course, to prove this, we need to look at the infinite number of samples or large number of samples. Uh, recall now that not, if we're going to deal with white sense stationary processes, white sense stationary uh, cases, and in that case, we can simplify the autocorrelation. So the autocorrelation will depend only on the time difference. We are looking at time variation, but what is important is the time difference between the sample. If you are doing the experiment in the night or the morning, what matters is the time difference only. So the autocorrelation as function of delta t equal to the expected value of, then you multiply the random variable with itself, there's a conjugate and there's delta t. So it's not a function of the absolute time, but rather a function of the difference. Uh, to, to explain the idea more, I'm showing you here two examples of two random processes, the one in blue and the one in red. They are coming exactly from the same Gaussian random variable. They have the same mean, they have the same variance, but the time variation is different. So if you take one time instant here, you will find that this is a Gaussian random variable with the same mean, same variance. But here there is independence, which means you take one sample, another sample, it's, they are just not correlated. There is no relation between them. However, in the case of here, you can see that there is filtering effect. There is slow changes. While they are exactly the same Gaussian, same mean, same variance. So how do we introduce, how do we represent that there is a relation that this process does not change dramatically? Then we use the autocorrelation function. And of course, if, if we sketch the autocorrelation, now it's function of only time difference. So we have delta t here you'll find that the two extremes is that you have delta, which means the samples are similar at the same instant of time or correlated, but then otherwise it becomes zero. And the other extreme, of course, if we have constant, if you have constant, it means they're always remaining, uh, they're always related. So something in between, a high correlation would look like this, and a low correlation would look closer to the delta. So we have the two extreme, delta and constant, 
then we can have values, values, values between them. So if I, if I show you the autocorrelation, it shows that they are changing slowly with time, while this one is, uh, is uh, changing faster. So the color goes with the red with the red and the blue with the blue. That's a quick summary of what autocorrelation is and why we needed to represent a time varying channel. Okay. We made simplifying assumption that it's a random process with whites and stationary. So we'll be using the distribution whether Gaussian, Rayleigh, or, or whatever. And we need an addition to that to represent the time variation with the autocorrelation. This is a quick example, another example to show you that we can generate things with MATLAB and how we got this code. I'm just showing you here that these two sets have the same samples. But these are 1, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2. The, can, you can change that there is slow change here. While we here we have jumps from 1 to 4, 1. So um, those have different autocorrelation. So this is the code for generating 1,000 sample, the blue and the red. And I'm just started with one, one sample, and then I introduced filtering effect. So I am filtering the original sample, which is independent to introduce correlation. And this is just a 55 window size. I, I later on I adjusted here we adjusted the the variance to make sure that they have the same variance of the two processes. So I, I measured the variance of the original one because filtering, sorry filtering will, is going to change the power in the signal. So after filtering I readjusted uh, the variance accordingly. And these are the plotting commands. So we can say that the vari the variation in time the autocorrelation is you take your two betas now beta because it's a fading and you compare the fading at two different instances of time uh, with delta t shift we assume white sensitivity no dependence on on, on on t and of course the frequency domain equivalent for autocorrelation would be the power spectral density remember that we have we can think in time we can think in frequency so the autocorrelation is one and the equivalent power spectral density is a Fourier transform of that. So if you take the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation, we get the power spectral density. So these two are related. You can think in time, you can think in frequency. Having said that, now people would like to come up with a representation of time variation. So usually they start with the uniform distribution of incident angles, uniform scattering model, and they try to come up with mathematical representation. So the autocorrelation uh, turns out to be following uh, Bissell functions here. So we are not going into the derivation. So C is the received power, path loss, path loss and shadowing, or if you want to, to use the same constant here. Um, then this is how the autocorrelation function is represented. And as you can see, it's function of FD, uh, the doubler spread. The more doubler, of course, the more variation you have. So this is how we plot it. it means that there are instances, of course, with high correlation as we uh, spread. It's the correlation going is positive, negative, and there are points where we have no correlation. The equivalent frequency domain model, the free transform of this will be uh, the following uh, function given as c over square root of 1 minus f over d squared. Of course, this shoots up here, but we make sure that the frequency is less than f. So uh, this, this, is, uh, this means that um, we're going to have different frequency selectivity, so different parts of the spectrum will be treated differently. And of course, we have different relation between the samples. Again, these equations are not for memorization, but you should understand what they what they mean. The autocorrelation and power spectrality are used to represent how this channel changes. If this was a delta, we'll have a flat here, which means we have flat fading. There is no uh, frequency selectivity. But this is good because if you give me a car and you give me the speed of the car, I have nothing about the channel. I can assume uniform scattering and I can come up with the correlation model and according, accordingly generate the time variation. Note that these points where we have zero crossing, they occur at fd times delta t approximately equal to, equal to 0.4 or the speed times uh, delta t time difference equal to 0.4 times lambda. So at a given delta t, you can, you can find uh, 
uh, you can show that this is going to be uh, the points where we have zero crossing. If you if you satisfy this condition, then we have uh, uncorrelated uh, uncorrelation in time. So both autocorrelation and power expectancy can be used for sim for simulation because you know we can think in one way or another. We can have signal in time convolve with the autocorrelation, or we can uh, sorry we can have we can use the autocorrelation to generate things in time, or we, cause, we can use the filtering of the power spectral density. Mobility causes spectral spreading, as we have seen. This is what we call the Jakes model, Clark spectrum, or spectral shifting. Okay, things will change on 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 uh, on, uh, especially for line of sight components. If we have line of sight, we'll get what we call spectral shifting. Channel approximation. Uh, channel approximately is constant. The channel over this range is approximately constant. That's about 1 over FD. So you know if, if you know FFD, then you can say that approximately the channel is going to be constant for a width of 1 over FD. And then we have also we have to be careful if somebody asks me what is the time to decorrelate. So you need to see this is approximately equal to 0.4 over FD. Time to, to decorrelate, it's the time to become um, a very small in value. Okay. So, and then we have time to stay coherent, which is approximately to, which is approximately equal to 0 0.04. This is much less than uh, the original but by 10 times. So the time to, to decorrelate is 0 0.4 divided by FD. And the time, time to decorrelate to get to this point. But time to assume coherence is just, let's say that this is the time. To decorrelate, we take just one tenth of here to assume that this is the time that the channel does not change much. To stay coherent means to remain the same, but to decorrelate to get into the zero crossing. Now it's time to apply what we learned for example. Given a mobile, a car, a vehicle moving at v equal to or v kilometers per hour. Uh, it communicates over a band of a uh, carrier of one gigahertz, and the transmission rate is one megabytes per transmission. If we're going to send a packet uh, containing 2,000 symbols, how fast can the mobile move, but still experience a near constant channel for each packet? That's there is a coherence that we that means the channel does not change with time. Let me recall with you the equations that we had before. We said uh, we want that. V times delta T be much uh, equal to 0.4. This is the time for zero crossing. If you want to be uncorrelated, uh, if you want to be things to be flat, there is no change, then it must be much, much less than this quantity because this is the crossing and we should be much less than this. So let's think about the, what we have. We have one megaboot, which means every one board will take one microsecond. So 2000 symbols will translate into uh, two milliseconds, right? Because one microsecond is for one symbol, 2000 times one microsecond, you get um, two milliseconds. Similarly, for the case of, of um, the frequency, we have um, one gigahertz carrier, which translate into lambda of 0.3 meters. So let's try to find the product here, V times delta T, the time for our transmission from the beginning to the last symbol is two, two milliseconds. So this we can say that V times delta T, but much much less than 0.4 lambda. We didn't say equal because we are not looking for the zero crossing. We would like it to be near constant. So it should be much less than this quantity. If we are looking for velocity, then we can solve for V by dividing both sides by two milliseconds. So the velocity must be much less than 12 centimeters, which is 0.4 times lambda, 0.4 times 0.3, you get 0 0.12 centimeters. And of course, divide by 2 milliseconds, if you cancel, you get about 60 meters per second, which translates into 216 kilometers per hour. Remember, we're using the, the unit kilometers per hour. This is equivalent to 60 meters per second. Now remember that we are just looking at approximate things. So 
I could have used here 0.5 for example just to make things simple lambda over 2 and then I'll get here 270 instead this is not the answer the answer much be, must be much less than this so somebody might say that let's divide by 10 divide by 5 divide by 7 approximately uh, if you want things to be coherent so we can say it's about 20 kilometers and just to relax the condition we can say velocity for the range of 30 to 60 kilometers per hour should be fine if you literally divide by 10 you get 21.6 kilometers but these are all approximately so approximate numbers so you can say from 30 to 60 kilometers I hope that you can try changing the numbers and see try to find out, find out uh, yourself what if we have 2 gigahertz and then we want for 4000 samples how the answer would change we can also ask the question how fast can the can the mobile move to experience uncorrelated channel or no correlation so at that stage we'll be using the zero crossing all right so i'd like to look at your answers your questions in the comment section we'll see you in the next video thank you very much